Okay, FAQ number 87. What about ballet and dance for Christian girls? Okay, um, we're going to start out here reading uh, 1 Peter chapter 3. Uh, the first two verses there, it's talking about a, uh, wives and their relationship to their husbands, but it's also really kind of showing proper um, actions for Christian women, uh, be they girls or even older women as well. Look at verse 3. 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 3 says, Whose adorning let it not be that outward adorning of plaiting the hair and of wearing of gold or of putting on of apparel, but let it be the hidden man of the heart in that which is not corruptible, even the ornament of a meek and quiet spirit, which is in the sight of God of great price. And I can tell you that ballet and dance uh, violate those things. Putting on of apparel, wearing of gold, getting all fancy, dolled up and everything and being meek and things, and you say, well, how do you know? You're not a, a woman. You've never been a young Christian girl. Well, I know that, and I'm thankful for that. But uh, it turns out that I have an expert on the subject here who was actually uh, very much involved in ballet and dance. And I'm going to show you the proof of it today. So we'll start out here with this picture. You can explain it. I'll show it. Move this thing down there so I can... Gotcha. Good. All right. Dance Atlantic is the name of the dance agency in my hometown area, Atlantic, Iowa. That's why it's called Dance Atlantic. And this was a jazz routine. I don't mm -hmm. remember the exact title of the song, but this is me right there. Obviously immodest. And if you take off that little strap thing, it would fit the definition of a Buddhist monk's uniform top. Yeah. You know. If you've seen the, the Danger of Religious Uniforms video, you know what we're talking about. Down here we have another one. This is my ballet routine that same year. And I'm right here. And, you know, I'm wearing makeup. It's kind of hard to tell, but, you know, lipstick for sure. Blush, a little bit of blush. Again, my mother dolled me up. You know, hair and makeup and everything. And some of my classmates helped out with that. But look at the extremely immodest bodice. I mean, the huge plunging deep V right there. Mm -hmm. The form-fitting top, you can't really tell, you know, but, later. right, but then the see-through skirt, you know. Yep. So, you know, and how can you defend this stuff if you're a Christian? And this is the actual uh, ticket, one of the tickets from Dance Fever of that year. Well, 1998, one of the years yep. prior to 2000. Um, okay. This, okay, that's the theme from that year, and there's my ballet of that year, see-through skirt, you know, knee-length see-through skirt, oh yeah, that's real modest, you know, and uh, plunging bodice neckline right here, form-fitting right here, yep. and by the way, all these costumes are 100% synthetic fiber, which means they're flammable, and they are extremely, extremely uncomfortable and dehydrating when you're actually performing on on stage. This is me in the middle, um, you know, another showing the belly type of immodest top, you know, Yep. form fitting, showing, accentuating the leg muscles there. Uh huh. Nice six pointed star too, I have to add that. Mm hmm This is uh, another one of my ballet photos, one of my dance classmates, it was a uh, if I'm not mistaken, at Sue Fisher's Photography in Atlantic, Iowa. That's where photos were usually taken. Mm -hmm. um, this is uh, Space Jam's jazz outfit. You know, again, see-through belly area. You know, um, technically a low bodice neckline, even though it's yep. see-through there. Form-fitting boy shorts. Gotta love that, you know. Mm -hmm. Pants in any way, shape, and form to include... Uh, skirt shorts underneath the skirt for a young girl is not modest um, and this ironically is very prophetic this was for the MIB theme song men in black jazz dance routine the uh, quite prophetically speaking this was a precursor to my initiation into the spook world years down the road mm -hmm. once I graduated high school yes yeah in case you don't know what a spook is a spook is basically um, Military intelligence, essentially. Another name for a Jeslik. So. This is a ballet routine. 
Um, I don't remember the song offhand, but extremely modest neckline of the bodice. I'm, I was there in the front on the right hand side. This is me posing after the before or after the routine, and this over here was my uh, ballet outfit that you saw earlier. Mm -hmm. And of course, I have braces. You know, so if any of you are thinking about getting braces, don't do it. It causes lockjaw. Hello, I speak from experience. Yep. And the interesting thing, too, is which we were talking about, you know, before we were doing this uh, video. And it was funny because when she was young, she'd try to wear immodest clothing to high school, you know, to fit in peer pressure, the whole thing and makeup and whatever else. And she was told, no, you're not allowed to, to wear that. And yet they, her parents themselves would dress her up with makeup and all the other immodest stuff to go to dance class and ballet. Mm -hmm. Kind of a double standard there, you know? Especially when my mother would tell me on one hand, oh, you're beautiful without makeup. You don't need to wear makeup. But then she would doll me up for things like this and, you know, other formal events. They mm -hmm. never missed a social event in town. Yep. And. But here we have another one. Yep. This is, you know, a classic example of a plunging neckline, although yep. not a V, form fitting, you know above the knee skirt length and mm -hmm. this was a ballet leotard yep. with a skirt and it goes way back into your past even when mm -hmm. you were very little right this was this picture is from 1991 uh, i believe february if i'm not mistaken of 1991 i dressed up in this outfit you know and i was practicing a handstand slash bridge it was part of my tumbling routine at the time it's also something that is done in gymnastics, if you're thinking about getting involved in that, which I don't recommend. And uh, every single outfit is immodest and uh, very, very accentuating of your features. Mm -hmm. And this one right here, I had a friend over at the time in April of that same year. And, you know, she and I are both wearing leotards, different styles and, you know, hose or tights, whichever one you want to call them. Are purely synthetic fiber and flammable and so uh, you know the point is is none of these outfits that you see in these pictures thus far are are modest no they all accentuate in different areas okay and then of course we have two more of the what was it called the show this is Saturday Night Fever okay so the, we have the jazz routine. this one right and I'm in the middle right here you know and I'm also in the middle right there, accentuating right. again, you know, the bo the lower body part is accentuated, the stomach area is exposed and accentuated, and, yep. you know, a so. higher neckline, but still immodest. Mm -hmm. And, you know, of course, people will say, well, yes, but, you know, they're just young girls and things like this and blah, 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 and whatever else. Um, but you have to ask the question, what does this stuff lead to? If you have your young daughter being involved in this, these things, what good is this going to do for her as a Christian woman older, later on when she gets married and things? And again, uh, another thing that, that my wife was really into in the high school years that this, this led her into it was she wanted to be a model. And um, basically, uh, the standard that you were told by, what was the, the deal? A prospective agent from Texas um, asked me if I would perform a certain act with him through instant messenger Fornic sent, fornication yes and as a way of of saying whether or not I would be accepted into his agency mm -hmm. and they also base your all your body measurements you know that you use to figure out if a certain type of apparel fits you or not they use that to also determine whether or not they will accept you and hire you yes and see, that's a natural result of what's going on there. And don't try to tell me that it's art, okay, because that's where I can jump into the thing and say, uh, coming from the art world, I know that, you know, a lot of what is classified as art is actually, actually just sexual perversion. Okay, a lot of the nude paintings and sculptures and other stuff like that, no, no. And see, this is performing arts, okay, and... It all goes under that same thing, and I can tell you from being in art galleries and at art shows and things, there are sodomites and perverts and immodest clothing and whatever. The new age free love type of a philosophy is all through that world. 
And I was in that stuff before I was saved. So, you know, don't act like, oh, see, you know, you were saved and whatever, you know. Uh, it's really bad. Um, should a Christian woman, and if you're homeschooling and your little daughter says, you know, I'd kind of like to try ballet or something, you need to wake them up to the reality of ballet. Um, and even if you, a girl could somehow wear a modest dress and whatever else and be up there dancing, uh, dancing is forbidden in the Bible. Okay, you don't see that in the Bible. And you say, what about David dancing? David, when he danced, it was kind of just like a little happy. He's running through the streets, jumping up and down, and he's happy and clapping his hand and things. You know, that's not a choreographed ballroom dancing waltz ballet performance. Okay, Christians centuries ago fought against dancing. They would go and protest dancing. Uh, they knew what it led to. They knew what it, that whole realm was. So, uh, should a should a what were you gonna say? Well, doesn't ballet come from the 17th century royalty people, where the uh, the the men of the royal court would do these ballet routines and stuff in these fancy frilly yeah. outfits and. Yeah, it was it was effeminate. It actually a lot of the uh, men that get involved in it are sodomite. But yeah, it, it actually you're right. It actually started. Um, with a lot of the royal court and the men were very very effeminate wearing a lot of lace and things like that you know um after uh king james came his son king charles king charles started the he married a catholic which king james had forbidden and he marries a catholic and he just got worse and worse and worse the members of parliament rose up there was the english civil war um they the parliament members defeated the royalists and then they took over and they got rid of King Charles II, King Charles I's son, and set up Oliver Cromwell as the Lord Protector. He didn't want to be called king because he said Christ, not man, is king. Uh, was a great many, man in many ways. But um, after he died, his son Richard Cromwell, I think it was Richard, took over. And the royalists rose up again, brought back in Charles II, and kicked out uh, uh, Richard Cromwell. And they actually went and dug up Oliver Cromwell's dead corpse and beheaded it and all kinds of weird stuff. And that court of King Charles II was into some seriously weird stuff. We're talking late 1600s. And they were into some real weird stuff. And that's when a lot of the immodest necklines started to come in for women. Um, the King Charles II had multiple women that he was fornicating with. And it was known. I mean, we're, the guy was a scumbag. You know, and they started to get into a lot of perversion at that time. So, yeah, you're right. Ballet goes back to that time period. So, ballet for Christian and, and dance for Christian girls? Absolutely not. 